Hi, this is Sarit Schwetzer, and welcome to the It Is Taught podcast, a podcast devoted to the teachings of Rabbi Schneir Zalman of Liadi, as recorded in his most famous work, the Tanya. My hope for this show is to make these teachings accessible and relatable to the average person, regardless of prior Jewish education or affiliation. The episodes follow the prescribed daily study portions and are meant to serve as practical lessons in how to live your life as your true self and develop an authentic and powerful relationship with your Creator. I have personally experienced the effects the study of this work has had on me, and I'm excited to share what I can of this knowledge with you. So please join me on this journey of learning, self-growth, and connection with your Source. Hi, and welcome to the It Is Top podcast. This is episode 47 for the 6th of Shvat in a leap year. And today we're going to be continuing with chapter 17. And just to start off, we're going to go back to our analogy of an addict. I know I've been using this analogy quite a bit, but I think it really is a good way to understand these themes. So if you remember last time and something that you might be familiar with is this idea that in order for an addict to heal, and to begin recovery, they need to hit what we call rock bottom. They need to get to a point where, you know, their life really, really, really does fall apart. And it's, it's just, they, they can't, they feel at least as if they can't get any lower. So why is this? This seems kind of cruel, you know, (laughs) it's like, why does somebody have to get to such a low point in order to begin the, the level of recovery? So I think that Uh, We can use another analogy, perhaps, to understand this, and then we'll get into the text and try to see how the Alter Rebbe Rebbe explains these ideas in his own words. So another way that I think this might make sense is when you think about, I know I can definitely relate to this, when you are reorganizing a closet. So imagine that you are reorganizing a closet. You open up the closet, and it's, you know, super disorganized. But at the same time, your home, you close the closet and nobody sees it. <laughs> and then the rest of the room is relatively neat, let's say. So now you come to the point and you say, okay, you know what? I've had enough. I'm going to reorganize this closet. So what do you do? You open up the closet and you start taking things out of it, right? You, want, you, have to, you need to take everything out, see what you're looking at, sorting through things, maybe making piles or whatever. And imagine that somebody walked in while you were doing this. And it would probably look like a huge, big mess, right? And it would probably look like an even bigger mess than it was before you began. Because before you began, as I mentioned, the mess was in the closet. And if somebody walked in and the closet door was closed, they wouldn't have necessarily seen this mess. But now that you have begun this process of working through the mess, it actually has created a bigger mess than you had in the beginning. So this is the principle of... In order to, you know, and it applies in so many different aspects of life, whether we're talking about an addict that's recovering, whether it's just a person who's going into therapy for anything, whether a person is starting to, wants to start a business, whatever it is, whenever, whenever, this is a very common theme that we see in life that in order to build, you often need to destroy, you often need to break things down first to deal, you know, if there's a problem you're trying to solve, you need to break it down, people say, you know, like, let's break down the problem. So now we're going to, in today's Tanya, understand how this works from a little bit more of a spiritual perspective, and how this relates to the idea of returning and building oneself up back to who they really are, to serving God ultimately, which is who a person truly is. So we ended off last time, remember we were talking about this wicked person and we were talking about how people who fall into this category of being fully wicked do not, as a punishment for their transgressions, Hashem actually revoked this the capacity that they have, the agency that they have over their minds to rule their hearts. So in today's Tanya, we're going to actually learn about, in a little bit more technical detail, what this looks like when somebody descends to such a place and what it looks like for them to redeem themselves too. So the altar Rebbe starts off and he says that this level of tshuva, which again is you know commonly translated as repentance, but really more accurately translated as return. So it's an aspect of tshuva tata, which is a lower tshuva. 
which is where we return, we, we, where we elevate the lower hay to bring it up from below where it got trapped in the external levels and the chitzonim. So just to explain that, that a little bit. So it's like, you know, when, when they say the lower hay, what are we talking about? Is that we're talking about the, the name of God. So the name of God, yud ke vav ke. There's a yud. And it's made up of four le- letters. It's, there's a yud and then there's a hay and then there's a vav and then there's a hay. And this comes up pretty frequently in Chassidus that we talk about this name of God because really this name of God is the basis of really all of reality as we know it. So this is, you know, God has a lot of names, but this is sort of thought of when people say the Tetragrammaton, you know, or kind of like his ineffable name, this is what we're referring to is this name, this four letter name of God. So what happens in the case of these people fall into sin and they're trying to um, redeem themselves and come back is this is a process which is where it's called lower chuva where they're trying to re-elevate this last hay this lower hay so in the yod ke vav ke the last hay that which fell into the chitzonim into this, these remember if you remember if you've been following the podcast the chitzonim were like the external powers in which god is concealed and he says that this is the secret of the exile of the Shechina. So what this is saying is basically that when a person puts themselves in, in exile, then God goes into exile with them. God, the Shechina is, you know, another another name for God. It's it's kind of like the indwelling of God in the world. And the altar Rebbe says, brings support for this from the Gemara in Megillah uh, in 29a, page 29a of Megillah, where it says, Galu Edom mahem, that when they were exiled into Edom, then the Shechina was with them. So meaning to say, so to be more specific with the altar Rebbe says, is that when a person acts in a, in a way that is likened to an act of Edom, which was like one of the Edomites, one of the, the foreign nations, the non-Jewish nations, what he's doing is he's actually drawing down into there the spark of godliness that vivifies his nefesh ruach neshama, his soul. So it's, you know, so this is talking about, again, like the category of a rasha. If you remember what's happening is in the category of a rasha, the nefesh Bahamas and the klipa that's in the left ventricle of his heart is the one that won the war, so to speak. So it's, the, this is, the, these these forces the, of uh, the animal soul are dominating over his soul while he's considered a rasha and they're dominating over this, his body, which is, you know, called the small city. And so what happens in that in- instance is that then his godly soul, his more godly part of himself, the nefesh ruach neshama, are entrapped and they're found in exile and they're ensnared within these forces and then what happens when the heart gets broken and his his spirit of impurity and sitra acha break as well and th- this causes them to spread apart so it's like you know if you think about like if, if you break like a, a vase or something all the parts scatter so this causes so when when the heart and the the spirit of impurity break this causes them to scatter and then in this scattering, this allows for that lower hay to rise back up to where it needs to be. So just to kind of, you know, recap this and maybe, you know, try to make it a little bit more understandable is what happens when a person sins and allows their animal soul to overtake them is the animal soul is <clears throat> is in control of the body. And because it's in control of the body, what happens to the godly soul and to the, you know, the, the holy part of the person is it becomes trapped and exiled within the person. And we also learned that when a person becomes exiled, a Jew becomes exiled, this causes the Shechina to become exiled. And this is represented by the lower hay of the Tetragrammaton of the Yudke Vavke. And so this lower hay gets into exile. And so how do we redeem this lower hay? And how do we get the person out of exile? It's only through the breaking of their animal soul. So the breaking of the heart, because that's where the the animal soul is found in the left ventricle of the heart. And this breaks the spirit of impurity. And in this breaking process, what happens is it disperses. And in the dispersion, this kind of like can allow for the uh the hay to escape so you know it's sort of like if you pictured if there was like an actual physical prison if the prison were to if like some type of 
force were to hit the prison and cause all the parts to scatter, then, you know, the prisoners could escape. So that's that's sort of the imagery that I'm picturing when I think about this. So uh, hopefully that was explicable and hopefully that gave you a little bit more insight into, you know, going back to that thing about, you know, why it is that an addict really has to hit rock bottom. Sometimes in order to heal, we really need to, and same idea it, we, is, you know, if we're, if we're trying to organize our apartment or organize our closet, we need to first break. We need to first disperse everything and then we can clarify what's going on over there. So I hope that made sense and we will continue this tomorrow when we get into chapter 18. I'll speak to you then. Thanks for listening to the It Is Top podcast hosted by Sarit Switzer. This podcast is dedicated in loving memory of my maternal grandfather, Avraham Yitzhak ben Benyamin Cohen of Blessed Memory. Music by Shoshana. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to support the show, please share it with others and subscribe on YouTube, Apple iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to leave us a five-star review. To find out more about the It Is Top project, including more information on my soon-to-be-published book, please visit our website, itistaught.com. To catch the latest from me, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Looking forward to speaking with you tomorrow, and until then, have a great day.